Hello, my name is Chad Green. I'm a researcher at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and today I'm going to talk about the Tide Model Driver version 3.0 for MATLAB. Now, TMD has been around for quite some time. It started as a Fortran program written by Richard Ray several decades ago. Then, about 20 years ago, it was rewritten into MATLAB, and since then, it's remained relatively unchanged. But uh, right now we're introducing version 3.0, which is a rewrite of the MATLAB version intended to be a bit more user-friendly and uh, hopefully more computationally efficient. To get started with TMD, the first thing you need to do is install the software, then we will install the data itself. Uh, I'll just walk you quickly through the process of installing the software. It should be pretty easy. If you've used MATLAB before, you know you can just download a bunch of the functions put them in a, repository, a, a folder where MATLAB can find them, and then you're good to go. Uh, another way to install it is simply through the Add-on Explorer, and I'll show you how to do that right now. So to install through the Add-on Explorer, start with the Home menu at the top of the page, at the top of MATLAB. Go over to Add-ons, click Get Add-ons. Once you click Get Add-ons, it opens up the Add-ons Explorer, which is connecting to the internet, it's looking through the MATLAB file exchange and seeing what's available. And so now we can type in Tide Model Driver. And here you see version 3.0. That's the version we want. So click on that. And over here at the top of the page, we have the option to add to MATLAB. So just click add to MATLAB, and then you should be good to go. Just to make sure that uh, everything has been installed well, uh, you can say which TMD, uh, the optional all. So here uh, on my computer, I've already got TMD installed in a GitHub folder. But if you come up with something here, then it just means, yes, we're good to go. We've installed TMD. The next step is to look for a model, a tied model. And this is a two-part process because there are many different title solutions out there, and depending on your needs, you may uh, want one or another. To get Tide model data, just go to the TMD GitHub page. You see at the top of the page, you have a bunch of functions. And then under installation, you see uh, it's a two-part process. Number one is add TMD to MATLAB. That's what we just did. And the second part is get Tide model data. So we'll click on that. Here's where you have to choose what Tide model you want to work with. If you're working with global solutions, then you'll need something that spans the entire globe. But if you are just focused on one region, then it's possible that a regional model is going to be higher resolution or a better solution for you. Uh, the other consideration that you really want to consider is some Tide models only have height. Uh, so you can predict how high the tide is going to be at any given time. But other tide models will also have transport coefficients. So look and see under variables, you see either complex height. Um, so down here we see complex height only. But then over here we have complex height and transport coefficients. Those transport coefficients basically just mean the horizontal velocity of ocean water uh, that results from tidal forcing. For the examples that we're going to be working through here, we're going to use the GR1KM TM version 1. It's a bit of a mouthful, but it's just a one kilometer uh, solution focused on the area around Greenland. What you do is you click Data Access, download the data, then uh, unzip whatever file com uh, comes into your, your downloads folder, put it somewhere where MATLAB can find it, and then you're going to be good to go. Going back over here to the MATLAB uh, window, we can then start looking into what do you need to do if you need help. First thing to do is you can always look for up-to-date information on the TMD GitHub page where you're just looking. Another option is to type help. Just as you would with any MATLAB function, you can type help in the name of the function. So here I'm saying help TMD predict. And the help just creates a, uh, a text-based help where you can look up the syntax, refresh your memory, or, or look how to use a function. And then it, it will describe in text how to, uh, what the different syntax means. But if you want a richer bit of help, 
then you can uh, use the documentation explorer. The only funny thing is instead of typing doc, you have to write TMD. So, but you can type TMD and then the name of the function. So if, for example, I've just typed TMD and then TMD predict. This opens the help browser window for TMD predict function where we see the same syntax description. But then we also have examples. And these examples try to go through and explain what's going on with each of these models, um, how to use each function. If you're not sure what function you want, you can always say TMD just by itself, and it'll open the same documentation browser, but we'll provide a list of the different functions that are available in TMD. So once we know how to get help and we've got TMD installed, we can start predicting tides. Now imagine there's a single location that you're interested in, let's say Baffin Bay. And for context, let's go over to maps.google.com and just type in Baffin Bay. These are the coordinates that you want to look at. Immediately, Google says, ah, oh, we're looking at this icy landscape, but in the map, it doesn't really look like much, so we have to zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. And we see we're in Baffin Bay, right here between Canada and Greenland. So if we want to predict tides right here in ba Baffin Bay at one single location but for a month, then the first thing to do is to find that time array. So here we're saying time is starting on January 1st, 2020 at one hour intervals going until the end of January. And over here in the workspace, we see it's a T is now a 1 by 721 date time array, 721 hours in the month of January. Now to predict the, the tide height at that location for one month, just say TMD predict, enter the name of whichever model you're using, and here we're using GR1KM. Uh, location in lat long, so 74 north, 68.2 west, and then that time array. We can evaluate this. It'll take a second. It has evaluated the time array, and now in the workspace in the upper right, we see we have a Z variable of the same dimensions as the time array. To plot it, we can just plot it as a time series. Here we have a one month of tidal heights at that one location in Bad Baffin Bay. You see the, the fortnightly tides and the diurnal tides and so forth. Now, what if your location is drifting? What if it's a buoy, like an Argo float, that just keeps floating along with the currents? In that case, you don't have one fixed location, so you can't enter a scalar variable. But uh, if you enter Latin long, the same dimensions as the time array, then it'll figure it out. So here, for example, I'm saying uh, for uh, a couple of days in January at one minute time intervals, we're going for a shorter time span but higher resolution just so we can see what's going on. Let's say that there's a, a float or a, a boat that, that goes across Baffin Bay uh, from 75 north down to 71.9 north and we'll just call it a straight line-ish. So here we, we've created a lat-long array, and in the workspace you see that the lat-long array are the same size as the time array. Now we can predict the tidal height along that path. So now we've predicted the tidal height along this, this drift track, and here I'm going to plot it as a scatter, as a geoscatter, just so we can see the, the spatial variability along with the with the you know the path of, of this drift track. So here we have now calculated this path from uh, what was it seventy something seventy five point six north down to 71.9 north. And along this path, every time it's red, it's a high tide. Every time it's blue, it's below the, uh, the mean geoid. 
And uh, you can see that we go through, you experience a, a number of high tides and low tides along this path. As a final example, let's say, what if you just want a snapshot? So if you want to see the spatial variability of tidal heights across a wide area, at, but at one single point in time. Here, you enter an array of latitudes, say from 60 north to 90 north at 0 0.05 degree intervals, and an array of longitudes, we're going to say 100 west to 20 west, so pretty, pretty wide area, also around Bath and Bay. Now what we need to do is convert these arrays, these 1D arrays, into grids because we need a separate data point for every location. Now we have, uh, if we can type who's, lat long, we have these two lat long arrays that are 601 by 801. Let's say we want to predict the tides at 4.15 p.m. on January 20th, uh, or January 12th, 2020. Now we can use TMD predict as before, just entering a grid of, of locations but one single time. It takes a second to, to create the whole grid and interpolate. Now we're ready to plot this grid. I'm going to use a p-color plot. And here we've created a, uh, a spatial map of what do tide li tides look like, the tidal heights look like, at a single location, or, or, or at multiple locations, but at a single time. What you see is the red is the high tide areas, the blue is the low tide areas at this given time. But what you also see is that there's this funny shape. It kind of curves inward. And that's because we're, at, uh, we're, we're really at the, the top of the world here where maps do funny things. In true space, these, uh, in, in true space it, it's, we, we really tried to create a rectangular grid. This model is a rectangular model on a rectangular grid. But it's stretched out at the north um, because these, these lines of longitude get end up stretching out. So here what we're really seeing is just map projection. Now, uh, if you want to add uh, the tidal vectors, the, the velocity vectors, you do basically the same thing, but instead of leaving this last input blank, you add either a u or a v. Give this one a second. Okay, now it has completed the solution. And here we have uh, tidal velocity vectors. That is, how fast is the water moving in response to the tides? What you might notice is that the water tends to move faster in these shallow er shallower areas. And that's because what we're doing is we're computing the transports and then dividing by water column height. So the shallower water is dividing a number by, uh, by a smaller number, which creates a bigger number. That's where we get these high velocities along the shallower waters. Now you can use TMD for more than just predicting tides. You can also find out a little bit more about the model. So for example, if you want to look at the water column thickness, that is basically how deep is the water. We call it water column thickness because in some locations, like for example under ice shelves in Antarctica, the thickness of the water column is not quite the same as the depth of the ocean bottom, but you can use TMD interp. So here we interpolate a given model file, this is the GR1KM, uh, to a water column thickness, that's, that's the variable we're choosing to interpolate, at these lat long locations we just uh, or created through mesh grid. I'm gonna give it a second to create this one. Here I'm just running this section of code, and here we've, uh, we've interpolated the water column thickness of this model, and again we see this, this uh, dis weird distorted pattern, and that's simply because we're using 
a projected model and are, we're putting it on unprojected coordinates. Now, in this, uh, in this example, all of the zero water column thickness data, like so for example, wherever there's land, that just shows up as zero, which makes sense. But what if you want to make it nan, not a number? In that case, you can use TMD and interpret the same way, but in, this time we're going to interpolate the ocean mask at the same grid points. And you can say, let's set the water column thickness, wherever it's not ocean, to nan. Now when we create exactly the same plot using the same commands, we see that the land areas are now white. We've just set them to NAN so they're invisible. OK, so sometimes you don't want to interpolate. You just want to get the raw data. So that's why we have the TMD data function. It's just to load the raw data. So for example, here, if, you, if we want to load the complex height coefficients, this line, this loads the raw data at the native resolution of the model. And now if we say who's h, x, y, cons, uh, who are these variables? Well, the first one is con constituents. It's a 1 by 8 cell. That's the name of the constituents. H is the height, the complex height variable. So, and you'll notice the dimensions are dimensions y by x by 8. The 8 is the 8 constituents. Uh, and we can also get that same constituent list simply by calling TMD con list. And that lists all the constituents that are available in any given model. Now, if you only want to load one constituent from a model, it's going to be faster than if you load all of all eight, for example. So here I'm loading the amplitude, the height amplitudes, that is the magnitude or, or the, the hypotenuse of the complex coefficient. And we're only going to load the M2. Here we say, OK, let's load the raw mask as well. And you can plot it as an image SC file. I like image SC more than pcolor sometimes just because it's faster, but it does have some quirks. Uh, for example, image SC, you have to set the y direction, and you have to make sure that the NANs are, uh, are set accordingly. So here, this is just the M2 amplitude of uh, the, the GR1KM type model. OK, so I hope this is just enough to get you started with the TMD version 3.0 for MATLAB. And let me know if you have any questions.